Zinc is the 30th element on the periodic table. And I think it's kind of cool for several reasons. One is that if you look at, at the periodic table, it is physically grouped with the transition metals. But a lot of people, if they color code the, the periodic table, it will be with the normal metals. And this just has to do with some of its uh, chemical properties. Um, and so, yeah, this, that's something that's pretty cool. It's kind of a transition between the transition metals and the normal metals. Um, some other facts about zinc. It is very cheap, and um, pennies were made out of pure copper, 90, um, or 99% copper, uh, up until 1982. And then midway into 1982, um, they realized they were losing so much money making these pennies that they then changed the pennies to copper on the outside. And in here, you can't see it, but there's zinc. The coating of the copper is just a few thousandth of, th thousandth of an inch thick. So that made the price of producing a penny less because before that it was costing more than a penny to make a penny, which is not sustainable. Now, nowadays, um, at least 2011, um, even with the zinc interior, uh, to, to make a penny it's costing more than a penny now. And same with a nickel. To, to make a nickel it costs more than a nickel. So, that'll probably change soon. But you can take advantage of this fact that there is zinc in the middle of, of a penny and do, some, do a really cool experiment. So, the way you take advantage of this, that there are two different metals in a penny, is that the electronegativity of copper, and I explained electronegativity more thoroughly in my sodium video, so hopefully you know what electronegativity is. But the electronegativity of copper is higher than the electronegativity of zinc. And because it, so if I kind of scrape this penny, I just scrape it on the sidewalk, both sides, so I make two little notches where the zinc is exposed. And then what I did is I dunked it in hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid won't react with copper because its electronegativity is too high. But it will react with zinc. And what you get is a very cool thing. I've got it here. I pre-did it. Here is it. It looks kind of like a penny, a uh, little corroded and weird, but a penny. And here you can see kind of, you can see the dark notch there. Here is the notch um, that I just ground in the sidewalk, but it's, you know, dark. And you can see um, the penny is really malleable um, and it's actually hollow because the zinc was all reacted with and turned into a soluble salt, um, zinc trichloride. And so I'm now going to, um, with my bare hands, rip a penny in two. There you go. Um, and if you look inside, you'll see it's um, like a kind of just a foil, a copper foil. So that's something very cool. If you just go to the hardware store, get some muriatic acid. This is something you can totally do at home. Muriatic acid. Take a penny, scratch both sides, dunk it in there, wait three hours, and you get a really cool result, and you can, in front of your friend, just rip a penny into. So, that's very cool. And then, another thing that's cool you can do with zinc is to galvanize things. Now, zinc, as was demonstrated just there, is, is, is more reactive than copper, and it's also more reactive than iron, and steel, because steel is mostly iron. So if you want to protect some steel structure, then a lot of people just um, plate it with a very thin layer of zinc, and that'll get corroded instead of the more valuable steel underneath that's the main structure. So just for the heck of it, I took a presidential dollar and I um, electroplated it. Um, uh, zinc's electro properties are also utilized um, in protecting steel structures in other ways. If you have, let's say, uh, a ship and you want to protect the hull of the ship, you can 
electrically wire a big blob of zinc to it, and um, there's a, just a small electric current in in the water because um, it's you know salt water. It's it's a okay conductor. So if you wire, wire it electrically to the to the steel, the corrosion of the zinc will generate a small electric potential, which will protect the steel from uh, it being corroded. So you don't have to coat the whole thing with zinc to protect uh, the steel. Zinc is essential to life, but it but a lot of its compounds are pretty toxic. Um, it heads the group that contains uh, mercury and cadmium. And as you go down the group, the metals get more toxic. The chemicals get more toxic. So zinc is actually necessary for life, but a lot of its compounds are toxic. Um, of course, some of its compounds aren't toxic because that's why they're essential to life. Uh, you don't have pure zinc in your body. Um, then cadmium is not as poisonous as mercury. It's not an acute poison so much, but it's extremely toxic to the environment and um, it's a cumulative poison. And of course, mercury is extremely toxic and can both have acute effects, but more commonly cumulative effects. Um, the element below that, polonium, is both extremely, extremely toxic and, and it's also extremely radioactive. So um, there have been several incidents of polonium poisoning and polonium is extremely toxic in two ways. One, because it's extremely radioactive and another, because it's chemically poisonous. Now, polonium is a cumulative poison, but it's so poisonous that you typically die before it has any chance to have cumulative effects. Um, so, such as driving you crazy, like mercury, you know, they'll, you know, you have the Mad Hatter because they rubbed uh, mercury compounds onto the top of hats. They went crazy before they died. But with polonium, you die before you go crazy.